What's going on guys? Akko here, bringing you something a little bit different today. Thought it'd be fun to record a set and then go back and give you guys my thoughts on the interactions moment to moment. You know, what's going through my mind? You know, what am I looking for? Why do I choose the decisions I do? And basically do an overview with you guys after the fact. This is something I've gotten a lot of requests for, so I thought I'd give it a try. And if it goes well, we'll probably end up doing some more of it on the channel. So be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments and leave a like if you do enjoy this. And with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So as you can see, we're up against a Videl focus team with two strong assists. And almost immediately, I get opened up by the Videl Pressure. Videl, a character whose pressure has evolved a lot over the course of this game, and nowadays, it's very scary. So that's a pretty interesting interaction right there. So I'm using my 4LL to try and poke safely because if Videl actually catches a button with her dodge, it can leave you insanely punishable. So I'm trying to minimize that by using 4LL here. And we end up trading. The trade was in my favor because I was using 4LL, but I did not react in time. So I did not get a combo there. Very nice optimized loop. I'm in pretty big trouble, so I decide to spark there because basically at this point with Zamasu's health like that, uh, the next hit is guaranteed I'm going to lose them. So at this point, um, I'm checking for spark baits. And if I don't see one, I'm definitely going to spark because we do not want to lose Zamasu this early in the match. Taking advantage of the uh, empty vanish privilege here. Uh, it would have been better if I would have called an assist after jabbing him here. But I was kind of confident in the momentum shift, so I didn't do it, but looking back, it would have been a better option to at least call Ginyu there to ensure that I got to keep my pressure. Because fun fact, most characters cannot tag you in that moment where you empty vanish behind a spark burst because they're facing the wrong way. It would have to be a character who has a move that hits in all directions is the only way to stop you, like sadly, like a lab coat. And as I didn't cover my landing, he used his reversal and got out of my sparking pressure. So now I'm back in, but I was able to reflect my way out of that situation. So that's an interesting situation right there. I'm calling Ginyu to cover the wake up, and then I'm vanishing to prevent him from being able to choose basically any option. This is, this is not to hit him, this is just to make sure that he has to block Raccoon. And then what's interesting is usually they fall into the beam, giving me like tons of frame advantage. But here the beam actually carried him behind me, which is very, very interesting. So that that throws me off. And I know it threw him off, too, because he tries to reflect, but accidentally hits an S because he doesn't realize we switch sides, which I also didn't realize for a moment either. Vanish exchange. I challenged there because I felt like he was too high. It is their turn if it's a low vanish, like low to the ground, I mean, but he was so high that I felt like, I think I can win this. And I had enough health to gamble it. So that was, that was a nice use of Beers' orbs at the start. Basically covered so much space that I was going to be almost forced to block that 21 assist. That was good. Right here, I'm trying to get control of the neutral again. Things were a little hectic, but I was confident in my key blast there, so I went in for the super dash. Gonna ahead and keep the corner with my assist here. He tries to use 2H to get out. We put him right back in. This time, we're going to go for a setup. A little bit of a corner setup with the uh, <laughs> with the notification debuff.
I remember specifically there thinking, uh, I thought I turned that off. <laughs> that was my thought in that moment. I was like, I thought I turned my alerts off. So there, that was just a raw tag because Zom's health is so low, I just didn't want him in anymore. And then the raw tag happened to be in my favor. I masked it with Ginyu's assist, even though it wouldn't reach. I just wanted something on the screen before I tagged. That was a lucky break, but it didn't last long as I tried to jump away and got blasted. Okay, so he didn't choose to level 3 there. I'm guessing he doesn't want to waste his spark time. I respect that. I'm trying to just stay calm here, look for any opening I can to reflect, get him off of me. Honestly, I'm waiting for a super dash, but he's not giving it to me, which is smart. There's the betrayal, but for some reason I did not turn around. Baby did not turn around for some reason. And yeah, right here I'm just trying to stay as safe as I can. Weather the storm, sparking is over. I'm feeling confident enough to bring Zom back in since we only need one hit. And there it goes. Debt. Okay, and round two. This is where the adaptations come in. What kind of adaptations are we making? Damn, I saw... Ooh, okay, I went for the mix right there. <laughs> went for the mix. And... Okay, so right there... That was a little upsetting in the moment because I got a clean hit that I couldn't do too much with. Like at this point, I'm like, okay, the only way to get him to the corner is to tag in baby. And I really don't want to tag in baby at this point. So rather than do that, I'm just going to mess with his team orientation because uh, this player is playing very well with his team synergy. Like he has a lot of setups that are designed to make you block assists and to get the Dell in. So I was like, I'm just gonna snap to mess with his team build a little bit. But sadly, it does not come out. That's why you hear the tuh, like uh, my snap did not come out. And I was still holding the button, which is what made me tag in baby. So now I didn't get my snap and I got baby in, which I didn't want. Let's see what I do with all this. Switching gears into baby mode. Here I noticed Ginyu is up, so I'm gonna use him to get the extension here. We're gonna go for the mid-screen Oki. Very reliable. I get Zamasu back in, because that's who I wanted in the first place. Didn't want baby. The 2H reaction. Nice little B&B &B here. So there I covered the Oki with a super dash because I was confident that he was going to uptech and baby would bring him down. And I thought even if he were to DP kind of far away from me, the super dash should take care of it. Going for orb setups here. He reflects out, I respect it. Here I'm trying to position myself to get a flight mode attack in, but because Beers takes up so much space, I never really found that opening. I didn't want to get in the range of orbs, and then right there I get clonked. Ooh, but he drops it. Tag Zamasu, let him get some of that health back. Here I'm deciding to back off. Uh, one thing you'll always notice about me, if you pay attention to my gameplay style, is I do not like scrambles. I will go out of my way to avoid them. I'll go as far as I need to, and here I feel like this situation is now out of control. He's got assists, I've got assists. He's got a DP, he's in the air. And so my first priority now is to get as far away from him as possible and reset the neutral, which is what you see I'm doing here. He opts to try to keep his pressure. That's why he tried to do a dunk into an assist call because if I would have blocked that assist, he would have gotten a turn. So his option was different than mine, but my option was let me get as far away as I can. And once I saw that he went for the dunk, I decided to cover myself with uh, a summon. Beautiful on Raccoon right there. Raccoon and that new, you know, enhanced armor on him against Key Blasts. Beautiful. Very good against Beers. Fidel coming back in. That was just an assist war moment. Once again, that Raccoon coverage. 
That was a nice dodge. So right there, he's... That was very, very smart. That was very, very smart. So, Birder is out. And this shows that he knows the rotation because the only thing that can come next is Key Blast because Geese only does Key Blast. So he does the 6H, which pretty much will negate anything I do with Geese at this point. So, very smart decision. Once again, forcing me to block. I get hit for trying to jump out. I'm in the corner. I've deemed it's this is dangerous. I'm going to spark. Try try to build the momentum. But sadly, what happened here is the Ginyu Force sort of betrayed me. So even though he's whiffing, see, he whiffed me completely. But in, uh, I forget which patch it was. It was either season two or three. Uh, they made it to where tagging Ginyu Force members counts as tagging a person. So because he kicked them, he is allowed to turn back around and swing at me uh, when ordinarily that would have been a whiff and he would have been unsafe, but basically because he kicked the members, it made him safe. And the pressure continues. I got mixed, but no pickup. What an awkward situation. I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Let me get Ginyu out of here. Nice 6H to go through the Key Blast. Ooh, that is a betrayal. But that's one of those C assists I'm unfamiliar with the recovery on, so I do not get the pickup. Going for the beam route because we can. So here I'm opting to keep the corner and go for a setup. Ooh. Ordinarily, that would have been combos, but I hesitated a bit on the 3S. I didn't do it fast enough. That would have been combos. Uh, basically, at that point, he reached the limit of, you know, getting hit and opted to Super Dash, which happens. Sometimes, you know, you go so long without playing or, you know, you're in a bad situation for so long that you choose a certain option just to get out of it. Take him the free reflect there and ending it with the vanish. Confirm. Match number three. We usually do first to threes around here, so this is match number three. I'm taking the early lead here. Keeping him low to the ground so I get more frame advantage. Bit of an awkward exchange. Uh, Beers took my lightning because his assist popped out and he took the lightning, so it, it threw, that threw me off for a second. Right there, I was trying to snipe him with a super dash. Like, the goal was to float over the Beers assist and then call Ginyu to cover my super dash. But the biggest advantage of the Beers assist, which I forgot in the heat of the moment, is that the orbs cannot leave the screen. So even if you pass it up like this, it will bounce off the wall and come back to hit you, which knocks Ginyu off the screen completely, causing a bit of a scramble. Neither of us realized that happened in the heat of the moment. We both dash forward and hit a button because it happened so fast. Here, I don't have an assist up, so I'm opting to go for the Hell Zone. Hell Zone being very good on Videl. I believe he thought I was going to vanish, so that's why he got hit there. Round start dunk. I'm trying to fly to safety. But once again, it's kind of hard to fly on beers. Right there, I tried to do the smart thing. I tried to teleport near him and just call Ginyu and then wait to see what situation comes from that. But he opted to swing before I landed. So I ended up landing in an auto combo. And when it looked like it was over, I tried to jump and I got two M'd. I remember... I remember making a face when this happened. I was just like, wait, what? Because <laughs> it was such an awkward situation. Definitely not good enough coverage in that situation. So right there, I'm just opting to use as many S's as possible when Beers is on screen because uh, his orbs will not beat S summons. So once again, very weird. So here, 
I uncharacteristically, I go for a big read. I feel like he is going to DP. And since I have the birder coverage, I feel safe doing it. So that's why I'm doing a 5H here. Cause I'm like, if he DPs, I'm fine. And if, you know, birder's going back and forth, so he's gonna bump him anyway. But he does a jump back heavy. It hits me and birder never comes back. I believe he got hit by it as well. So once again, I'm a, I'm a bit confused, which is why I ended up teleporting into orbs right there. Here, we're just keeping the rotation going. For some reason, I'm very, I don't know why, I'm just, at this moment, I'm very wary of a DP. I keep going into DP bait mode, but he's actually not doing it. And then there it goes. So I'm still in DP bait mode. And then that 2M coming all the way back in on me and ruining my day. And Ginyu goes down. That's the danger of baiting a DP. If you're baiting, you're ultimately giving your opponent an opening. So right there I vanished because I didn't react fast enough. I was like, oh, I need to EX, but I was like, it's too late, I need to vanish. So here I got baby and, an, and a stolen assist. So right there, I made a huge mistake. What I wanted to do, this was just because I made this decision in the heat of the moment. I was like, since this is a medium starter, I want to turn this into either a two touch or potentially a kill by using my spark. And since it was a heat of the moment decision, I end up going for the wrong route. What I was supposed to do is use the ground pound and then spark. If you do that, you're guaranteed a corner loop, uh, multiple corner loops actually. And I potentially could have killed them, but I did the wrong route. So what I end up doing here is just like, at this moment, I realize I've done the wrong route, but I'm trying to at least get a level three, but it still ends up dropping. That's something I do need to work on, sparking after the fact with Baby. I don't know why I want to spark in the air with him so bad. I guess because that's the common thing you do with most characters, but yeah. Something I'm working on with him. Here I'm just trying to make the most of my spark. When I feel like here I used up too much meter. There goes that DP that... So right there, I was a little upset because I went for a reflect, but clearly it did not come out. I remember thinking in this moment like, damn man, my reflect, rip. And that's gonna do it for baby. That brings it to two one. And here we go into match number four. And as you can see, like, when you get this far into a set, you have so much information between you and your opponent, so things are going pretty fast. Uh, right there, this is something I've been making a conscious effort of doing more, is utilizing the ridiculous active tag property on Zamasu's 236S. As you see, even from basically mid-screen, I'm given the corner. And with a character like Ginyu, immediately getting the corner is so cheap. So I'm taking this option a lot more lately. No assist up, so I had to free form it. He decided to continue the dodge follow up there, which is leading to him getting hit. I went for the chase on 21, but once I realized I wasn't going to get it, I back off and go back into summoning mode. Here I'm trying to stay as safe as possible, not over committing. And right there, because of the fact that he got caught by it in the air, nobody likes blocking things in the air in this game, so I felt the super dash coming, so I waited on it. Goes my 2H route. I should have tacked on a few more hits. I was afraid of the hit stun dropping, so... I went a little light on that, so we ended up not getting the kill there. A few more hits and it would have killed. We're going into anti-super dash mode here. Just listening for the sound. That's that's all I do there, listen for the sound of it. 
since you can't actually see the opponent. That was tough right there. I switched my block because it was one of those awkward situations where it looks like she jumped over me. Actually, she did jump over me for a frame. So I switched my block and I get hit in the face. Damn, I don't feel so bad now after looking at that in slow motion. She did switch over me. Knocked down here, got the orb on my block. Right there, that was uh, careless of me. Uh, I did not have a bar. I'm, I'm, I start fishing here. I start 5S fishing. It's like if this 5S connects, I'm going to empty vanish it and confirm. But I don't have the bar for that. Like heat of the moment, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to my bar. That's, that's a, that's a demerit for, for past echo there. Right there, I was confident, and I actually think I hit landing recovery because he was still in the middle of doing uh, his orbs. Right there, I'm not worried about the... So, man, hold on, a lot of stuff happened there. So, here, I'm not worried about the DP because the force will protect me, depending on when it's called. Um, I should have done 2LL here. Like, that would have been so much safer. I actually would have blocked this and killed him. But I went for 2L2M in case he was holding up back. So this turns into a bit of a scramble. And again, you know me, I don't like scramble. So as you can see, I'm trying to get away from the scramble as soon as possible. But him, he is deciding to press the situation. So trying to get away from the scramble, I call my assist. Uh, he's still pressing the situation and that causes him to get happy birthday. And this is why it is bad to uh, swing into scrambles. Like, th this is what can happen to you when you try to force the situation after the fact. But I can understand it. Sometimes you just feel like you can get that hit. And if you if you do, I mean, it's good. If not, too bad. Right there, I was... I had a read right there. Like, I felt like he was going to be unsafe. So that's why I super dashed. I felt like he was going to do that 2H a little bit earlier, but I got ended up, I ended up getting hit by the tail end of it. Ha. And so at this point, we have so much health that we would have to make a ton of mistakes to actually lose. Here I was right there, I was incredibly surprised that he didn't level three me. And with a little bit of patience, we get the 2H and close out the set. So that was definitely good games. Uh, I feel like he was playing very well. Like, my advice for him would probably be to just, you know, relax a little bit more in a few situations. But other than that, I feel like he was playing his team very well. I feel like I was playing relatively well, and uh, those were good games. And that brings us to the end of the video. Honestly, I had a lot of fun doing this. It's always good to review your own matches to, you know, go back and see what you were thinking in that moment. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, uh, leave a like. You know, it really helps the video out. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and I will see you fellas in the next one. Peace.